What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So what we know as of this afternoon is a bill is going to pass through the house. It's expected it's going to pass this week. I also want to give you a little bit of a stimulus package update. What we're seeing there, we know that Russia could potentially invade Ukraine very soon. McDonald's now says they are seeing a, few, a food shortage across the world and other companies are saying that they are seeing this here inside the United States as well. We also want to address the worst US airlines and why this actually matters. So stick around and we'll cover all that in today's video. First off, hopefully you guys had a wonderful weekend. Let's get into the update for today. Currently, the House is working on a stopgap bill. They want to work on the stopgap funding bill and their hope is to get this passed this week. That is their goal. Now, House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer, he said that the goal has pretty much been to come to an agreement on the stopgap bill so that gives negotiators more time to work on the omnibus spending proposal for the remainder of the year. That's the goal. Now, whether or not this happens or not, we don't know. But according to many reports, the stopgap bill is the most likely outcome because Republicans in the Senate don't support the omnibus spending proposal. So that's what we know what's going on there. Steny Hoyer also said, and I quote, we're gonna get something done. It'll probably be a short term CR and it will be this coming week to give us a little more time. Negotiations are very vigorous and I think that we're going to get agreement both on the top line, how much spending is going to be in and how it will be spent. That's key. And the reason I say that's key is because in the past, we have seen where the lawmakers agree on the top line number, but they don't agree where the money's going, how it's being spent, and sometimes just the language behind it. And that's a big issue as well. But within the Senate, here's what we know. Many Republicans agree that this is really the only way forward. There's no other way. There is just not enough support for an omnibus bill and they are saying that right now, the only way to keep the government funded is through a continuing resolution, which is what we are seeing right now. So that's the good news is we're getting a similar report from both Democrats and Republicans that this is the likely outcome. So my guess is it will pass. We will not go into a government shutdown in just 12 days. Now, here's the big news that we've been hearing recently. And this is actually regarding the pandemic because right now, according to reports, the White House wants to have a plan in place to usher the United States and the American people through any additional variants that we may see coming up. And they say this because last year, President Biden pretty much said that the pandemic was over right before the 4th of July. That was the goal. Well, the pandemic wasn't over. The worst was yet to come and the White House wants to avoid that catastrophe once again. So the White House is saying that they can't sit back and wait for another variant to appear. They need to be proactive and be prepared for what is to come. So just understand that most experts say that we're not out of this pandemic. We're getting close, but there's still a long ways to go. Right now, this means that Democrats must fall in line to help pass bills based on their highest priority. And here's what we are being told. Right now, the Build Back Better Act isn't even in the top two, not in the top three, it's actually number four on the list of priorities. The list goes according to, uh, according to multiple reports, goes like this. There's a government funding bill. This is the most, uh, the highest priority because it's the one that comes up the soonest. Then it's the COVID relief package. Then it's the voting rights bill. Then it's the Build Back Better Act. So if we look at this from a timeline uh, you know, point of view, the government funding bill, we have 12 days. We have 12 days until February 18th to get this done. Okay. The COVID relief package, according to uh, multiple uh, lawmakers and the White House themselves, they're saying we have until about this summer. So we have until this summer to get this done. For the voting rights bill, we have pretty much until August, maybe September to get this done. As far as the Build Back Better Act, some are saying we might have a better chance of waiting until 2023. So big news there because as of right now, every single other bill is getting prioritized over the Build Back Better Act, which means chances are it's not gonna get passed. But there's also another problem. 
progressives know that when it comes to fighting for some of their agenda, fighting for their chance to win this upcoming midterm election, well, they have to get some of their previous agenda passed. If they don't, the chances of them uh, winning are actually being cut. So some experts say that progressives understand what they're fighting for. And right now they can't hold back. They got to push the Build Back Better Act because this was one of their promises. Now, according to Biden's national security advisor, and I want to bring this up because a lot of people are asking pretty much why. Why should Americans really care that Russia is going to potentially invade Ukraine? Well, according to Jake Sullivan, who's President Biden's national security advisor, he is warning us that Russia could potentially invade uh, Ukraine in potentially just a matter of days. And he said, and I quote, we are in the window. Any day now, Russia could take military action against Ukraine, or it could be a couple of weeks from now, or Russia could choose to take a diplomatic path instead. The most likely outcome based off of all the movement that we've been seeing is Russia is going to invade Ukraine very soon. Now, the reason I bring this up is because when people ask, why should you even care about two other countries, uh, Russia going and in invading Ukraine, the reason is because the United States will most likely um, input themselves into the middle of this. And if we do, that could potentially put us into another war. So anytime we go into war, that creates other issues. Right now that we're seeing uh, high inflation, we're seeing that unemployment actually go up just a little. Uh, but as we're seeing more changes to our economy, a war is not what we need to add on top of that. So we'll see what happens there. But in other news, I want to bring up a few different stories, one on McDonald's, the other one on our different airlines. The first one on McDonald's. Right now around the world, McDonald's is actually experiencing a shortage of French fries. In some countries like Japan, Indonesia, Taiwan, and Malaysia, French fries are actually in very high demand. And in these locations, what we're seeing is that many stores are actually having to just eliminate large and even medium fries until they can get more back in stock. Currently, the supply chain is actually causing a huge issue for many McDonald's franchises. But here's what you need to understand. This isn't the only company that's going through this. Many restaurants across the United States have said for the past few months that some of their products are in very short supply and they are in demand. So here's what experts have agreed on or um, executives have agreed on. They've actually agreed that sending smaller shipments to each store is better than sending more products to one store and none to the next. So it just helps kind of make it uh, somewhat consistent that everybody's getting the same amount. The only issue there is some are also saying that we shouldn't send certain products to certain stores because by doing that, if people don't actually want those, it's not a popular product. Those products could go bad before anybody gets to consume them. So if you do eat out from time to time, executives say, just understand missing items should be expected at this point. But let's get into the news on uh, US airlines. I want to give you the list of the best and worst US airlines. And let me just read it off first and I'll explain why. The list from best to worst. And let me know if you've flown on any of these in the past six months. The best one is Delta Airlines, followed by Alaska Airlines. Number three is Southwest Airlines. Number four, United Airlines. Five, Allegiant Airway. And tied for number six, we got American Airlines and Frontier Airlines. Number eight, Spirit Airlines. And number nine is JetBlue. Now, the reason I wanted to give you this is because a lot of people uh, in the comments over the past few months have been complaining that the airline that they were using is the absolute, absolute worst one. There's no worse airline. Now, according to reports, the reason why JetBlue is considered the worst on this list is due to their extreme delays. They saw a massive worker shortage, the length of time passengers had to sit on a tarmac. And in some cases, passengers said that they had to wait more than two hours, even after boarding the airplane before it actually took off. So JetBlue also said, or the reports also indicate that JetBlue had the most customer complaints. They had the second fewest uh, on-time arrivals and this is the cause for concern. And this is why I want to bring this up is because 
a lot of people, and let me ask, and I'll ask you this in a second, but a lot of people would rather save money by buying a discount ticket and flying with uh, somebody like JetBlue, Spirit of Frontier, as opposed to like Delta or Alaska because they're more expensive. But at the same time, let me ask you this, would you rather pay less and have to deal with all of this stuff? Or would you be accepting of the fact that you pay more, but you also get to avoid all the issues? You get to you know leave on time, you get to, you don't have to sit on the tarmac for one to two hours before you even take off. Let me know, you're down in the comment section below. Would you rather save a little bit of money and risk potential delays and customer service issues? Or would you rather pay more? The reason I asked that question is actually pretty simple because that's what we're seeing across the United States. Some people, many Americans would rather save money by paying for a uh, somewhat inferior product. Uh, the reason I say somewhat inferior is because sometimes they're not as great or they just don't have the customer service. They don't have a, maybe it's a return policy, whatever it may be. Some Americans would rather pay less because of the times that we're in. And that's what we could see is the, the better products aren't actually the ones that are being sold the most. It's the cheaper items because right now, the American people, according to reports, are gonna be in a very frugal state. So we'll see what happens there, but that is what we know as of right now. So again, just wanna thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.